first half of October can be quite tense, especially because we start off with an eclipse. The second part is a little bit easier, but let's hold off talking about that. Let's start off with the eclipse. On October 2nd, we have a solar eclipse or a new moon in the sign of Libra. This for you, Scorpio, is happening in your 12th house. There could be faded new beginnings when it comes to your spirituality. You might be starting a new spiritual routine. There might be something happening that finally gets you in touch with your compassion and with the side of you that is able to let things go and the side of you that can acknowledge the humanity in all of us, no matter where we come from, who our family is, or what type of job we have. The solar eclipse is happening in the Deccan ruled by Uranus, which means that this, these events around the eclipse might come to a surprise. They might happen unexpectedly. And uh, yeah, they might come out of nowhere and you might not see them coming. And I also want to mention that during the eclipse, we have a lot of planets retrograde. We have Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto all retrograde. So please do not try to feel like you need to react right away or you need to take an action right away during the eclipse. Give yourself the time and the space to reflect, uh, to take some time first, uh, and feel free, like feel comfortable with the fact that you can react or take an action later, a week later. A couple of days later, on October 4th, we have Saturn trying Venus. For you, Scorpio, these are highlighting your first and fifth house. And your powerful identity, the work you've been putting in to really be your own individual, um, to showcase yourself in a way that really represents your inner world as well, is helping you with your self-expression. We know that since, um, I think, March of last year, you might have been struggling a bit with self-expression, with getting in touch with your creativity or your inner child. But now that we have this trine at the beginning of October, it could feel like the more you step into your true self, especially um, physically, the way you present yourself to others, is allowing you to slowly also get in touch with pleasure, creativity, and this inner child. Then we get to a couple of interesting days, and specifically October 9th and October 11th. On these two days, we have two planets that are switching their direction of movement. I got to add, no planet ever really switches the direction of their movement, but rather what we're talking about is from where we're standing here on Earth, when we look up in the sky, it appears as if they are changing their direction of movement. So on October 9th, we have Jupiter, who's been going forwards, starts going backwards, or goes retrograde. And on October 11th, Pluto, who has been going backwards, now goes forwards or goes direct. So for you specifically, Scorpio, on October 9th, Jupiter is going retrograde in your 8th house. And all of the great opportunities you've had around vulnerability, around uh, shared resources, maybe the amazing money you've been getting from others, uh, the loans you've been able to get from others. It's time to reflect whether you're taking those opportunities for granted, whether you're getting uh, maybe too haughty or too um, unappreciative of those opportunities. And then on the 11th, Pluto will go direct in your third house, Scorpio, your house of communication. This is finally the last way out for Pluto uh, from your third house. It has done this sort of back and forth between your third and fourth house for quite a bit of time now. 
But finally, once it leaves Pluto in just a bit of time, it will fully be out of there for your lifetime. Therefore, now that it, it is marching forwards out of your third house into your fourth house, not looking backwards, what this means for you is that now is really the time to put your money where your mouth is. Now is really the time to put into action what you have learned about the power of communication, the power of your words. And then we get to my two favorite days in the month of October, not necessarily because they are like fortunate days or easy days, but because they are so interesting. So on October 13th and 14th, we have the sun trining Jupiter. And usually this is a really good aspect to have. It shows a lot of optimism, a lot of good feelings, excitement, um, maybe a little bit also like feeling um, capable, stepping into our ego. However, what makes these two days so interesting is that we also have two more challenging aspects happening at the same time. These two aspects are the sun squaring Mars and Venus opposing Uranus. So even though we might be feeling optimistic, we might be getting these ideas of um, very interesting, innovative, amazing things we want to do, we feel excited. That square to Mars is also letting us know that perhaps our actions cannot support us just yet. We are unable to just yet take the actions that we need to put those ideas in place, in motion. Also, because we have that opposition between Venus and Uranus, we might be really feeling like, yes, we want to do something new and exciting. Yes, we want to uh, disrupt the status quo. But at the same time, we like the comfort and the security of being accepted and belonging, the comfort and security and, and harmony of our everyday life that is already there. For you, Scorpio, the Sun and Jupiter are highlighting your 8th and 12th house. So for you specifically, we see some sort of excitement or feeling optimistic in regards to your inner world, in regards to your mental health, in regards to the hard work that you've been putting in, in taking care of your mind, of your limiting beliefs. Maybe you've been going through therapy and really putting in the work. And please do allow yourself to get excited. Do allow yourself to dream big with the sun and Jupiter trine. However, just one word of caution, do keep in mind that you might not be there yet. You might not be able to take the actions or the steps just yet. Then on October 17th, we have a full moon in the sign of Aries. For you, Scorpio, the moon will be in your sixth house and the sun in your twelfth house. You might be seeing your routine in a brand new way, in a way that you have never realized before. You might all of a sudden get that, wow, it is gluten that is making me bloated. Or, wow, it is me going to bed at midnight makes a really big difference to how I feel in the morning. These are just some examples, of course, and there are many other ways that this can manifest. Venus is sextiling Pluto during this full moon. Remember, Pluto is in your house of communication. So it could definitely be while you're talking with others, uh, maybe while you are teaching or presenting, um, that all of a sudden you realize, wow, Yes, this is the thing that's not working about my routine or wow, this is the thing I need to change. Uh, so I definitely encourage you during this time to keep talking and keep expressing yourself. The day after, on October 18th, Venus enters the sign of Sagittarius or your second house. You might uh, be quite focused on your money and on bringing a sort of enjoyment or a sense of beauty or harmony, you know, if we were really think of a stereotypical manifestation of this, it could be buying a beautiful new wallet, for example. Uh, but if we were to go to a more deeper level, this could also manifest as 
you feeling more love for yourself and more support for yourself and finding it easier to be respectful to yourself by doing the habits that you know are good for you and avoiding the habits that you know hurt you in some way. A couple of days later, on October 22nd, the sun squares Pluto. And even though it's a square with the planet Pluto, which can be quite intense, this is quite a fast moving transit. So even though it might feel intense, it's most likely not going to be an event that will impact your entire life, but something that will just impact a couple of days in October. This trine is highlighting your 12th and 3rd house. So you might be talking about spirituality. You might be talking about compassion. You might be more keen to bring up conversations with people about the humanity in all of us. About what it means to be human. And you might be uh, more open talking to people about death and about This idea of just letting things go and um, trying to control things a little bit less and just trying to let things flow a little bit more. This is a square, so it might be that maybe you're unable to really express the extent of, of your inner world or the ideas that you have. It could be that you are expressing this and people are reacting in a weird way, which maybe makes it harder for you to have compassion and and love towards them. Uh, But there is some tension there when you are uh, expressing and talking about spirituality. I told you this would be a quick transit because literally the next day on the 23rd, the sun leaves the sign of Libra or your 12th house and enters your first house. With the sun in your first house, you might be feeling especially charismatic, especially outgoing, and you might even be finding it much easier to um, showcase yourself to others in a way that's truly aligned with how you feel and who you truly are. Even though I left a couple of trines and sextiles out of this horoscope, I just thought they're most likely Um, they're a little bit more gentle, not as noticeable. There is one that I would like to talk about. This is happening on October 24th, and it's a sextile between Mars and Uranus. Both Mars and Uranus can be quite explosive planets, and that's why I thought, even though it's a sextile, I think for some people it would be much more noticeable, so let's make sure we talk about it. For you, Scorpio, this is highlighting your 7th and ninth house. With Uranus in your house of partnerships, you might have really been holding your ground with your partner or in your relationship. You might have really been trying to establish yourself as your own unique individual. And on this day, you see that that's helping you in some way in fulfilling your own or sort of realizing your own life philosophy and helping you determine your own values, perhaps helping you determine, hey, there's a certain travel that maybe I want to take on my own, that I want to be courageous with, a, a travel somewhere that scares me or do it in a way that scares me. Or it might lead to you figuring out that there's a certain area of life that you want to learn more about, that you want to study uh, a little bit further. And finally, we close off the month on October 28th with Venus square Saturn. Venus and Saturn are highlighting your second and fifth house on this day. And it might be a bit more of a tense end to October because of this. For a while now, since March of last year, you've been finding it hard to express yourself, perhaps finding it hard to have more fun, to get in touch with your creativity, to get in touch with your inner child. And on this day, you might especially find that that's impacting your self-esteem. It's impacting your self-confidence. Maybe it's even impacting your finances. Maybe you are spending a lot of time just searching different hobbies, um, hanging out with lots of different groups, and that could also be just draining your wallet. But overall, Scorpio, I hope you are ready to take on the challenge of October, especially when it comes to communication, your spiritual practice, and of course, getting in touch with your creativity. 
Thanks for joining me, Scorpio. I hope this horoscope helps you for the month ahead. And if you want to learn more about the eclipse at the beginning of the month, then make sure you check out this live that I did at the end of last month. Thanks, Scorpio, and I hope to see you again soon.